nothing, nothing out of the ordinary that I just uh, playing a little bit more and <clears throat> trying to get as many rebounds as I can, finish as many lobs and dunks as I can. Simple as that. Which is what you'd see right now on ESPN2 as Sims rocks the rim out of the timeout. Barrett, good shovel, oh, and Nick. Sims flushes it down. 17. Sims again! What's up, Knicks fans? Ray B, sport performance, corrective exercise, and movement coach, back again for the Knicks wall. This time to break down and talk about Knicks rookie center, Jericho Sims. Drafted with the 58th overall pick of the second round of this last year's draft out of Texas, Jericho Sims has been buried behind Mitchell Robinson, Taj Gibson, and Nerlens Noel on Tibbs' bench, although we have been seeing a tremendous amount more of Sims in the game. Now, Sims brings a frantic energy to the court that is palpable every time he steps on it. If you've been watching, you've seen. The energy skyrockets when Sims steps onto the court. Although currently, Sims is a bit more of an athlete than a basketball player. Sims is relying heavily on his athleticism and his explosiveness to be productive. Like when Sims is rebounding, he's not doing a Dennis Rodman-esque spin rate on the ball, where's it going to go, science-y type thing. Now I hit the rim, it's boom, uh, click, and go back this way, boom, here, here, click, and go that way, boom, that way, click here, and go back this way. His 44 and a half inch vertical is the second highest in NBA combine history. So it is likely that he's thinking, I'm just going to jump higher than you. So while he's short for a center at 6'9", his 7'3 wingspan and leaping ability is what is allowing him to hold his own down low a bit better and use those 7'3 wingspan arms to box out a lot more effectively, which is allowing his teammates to swoop in underneath and grab those rebounds and even grab some rebounds himself. Now, this is to be expected with a late second round pick. I mean, nobody expected Jericho Sims to come in and instantly be a effective, polished post player to instigate and initiate the offense. He's in the game to bring a spark. And if you've, if you've been watching, you've seen it. When he's on the court, he's doing that. So let's dig in a bit more and see what Jericho Sims being on the court for the Knicks means and see if we can pull away anything from the way that Jericho Sims uses his body and his movement in his game. Now, one of Jericho Sims's trademarks is his swat out to the point. It's a Tyson Chandler-esque tip out to the guards, and I love to see it. Now, for those of you who don't know, in his third year at Texas, he had a stress fracture in his back. My theory is that he had developed this technique of swatting the ball out to reduce the stress in his lower back, landing with a rebound. Now, the injury concern would now be that big swat out as he puts more miles on his body could open him up to a potential lat strain down the line. Again, I do think that he developed this technique also to compete with bigger bodies down low. At 6'9", it doesn't matter how long your wind span is. It's going to be tough to bring down boards against those guys. So swatting it out to the point is a great technique to use. Now, I like watching Jericho Sims play. It is entertaining to watch him go. Although there is a very frenzied, aggressive energy about him. And in that 100% all the time, go, go, go style, it leaves you a little susceptible to some potential injuries down the line. When he's running the court, he looks good running the court. I like the way he runs the floor. He has a little bit of a long stride. I would like to see him clean up his strides just a little bit when he's running to reduce the risk of potential adductor strains or a hip strain or something like that with a little bit of too long of a stride. I love the way he pulls his rebounds down, although you might have noticed when he pulls his boards down and he starts thrashing side to side through that transverse plane at 23 years old and playing limited minutes, not all that much to worry about, but as miles start to accumulate, thrashing side to side can definitely leave him open to oblique and lat injuries. Have you ever been in a situation where someone catches you unexpectedly and you turn to the side really hard and then you feel like a little twinge in your back or your inside your oblique? Have you ever had the desire to write your initials in wet cement? Have you had your hearing tested lately? That's what I'm talking about, except it'll be a lot worse for him because he's doing it so hard and so strong because he's a pro athlete. And what I mean when I say clean the strides up is not change your running mechanics, it's just to take shorter steps. Now, 
Have you ever been walking on a surface and you step on a spot that's a little slippery and one of your legs goes a little bit further and you feel like that stretch in your thigh? Have you ever visited a Chinatown section in a major city? Have you ever visited a flea market? Have you noticed what big stars real estate agents have become? That's what I'm talking about. That can happen if he doesn't clean those up. Can happen. Let's avoid it altogether by just shortening those strides up. Another thing in Sims's game that I really like is his ability to stay in that low center of gravity squat. If you've seen the Obi Toppin video, exactly kind of the thing I was talking about. He is nice and low, he's got a good hunch to him, everything looks clean, and it's the reason why he's able to facilitate and move around those picks when he's playing defense. He does get beat sometimes, but for the most part, that low center of gravity is keeping his glutes and his legs engaged so that he can spring up at any given moment and swat that ball out or grab that rebound. Something that I love watching Sims do is setting picks and then rolling. If you watch Sims setting a pick, watch him roll. He absolutely, out of a cannon, explodes towards the rim. I've seen it a lot with Quickly, I've seen it a tremendous amount with Fournier, even a little bit with Burks, but they're not really looking for him. But it's opening up space for them to shoot. When he goes and sets that pick, watch it next time, he is going to beeline to the rim. And if they're looking for him, it's going to be really hard to stop and it's going to be effective. The only thing is, it's going to require him to be on the court a little bit more and develop some chemistry with those players. So it's, it's no secret that Mitchell Robinson is in a contract year, and with the increased role that we've seen Sims get, a lot of people have been saying that they might actually just prefer to roll with Sims over Robinson instead of paying Robinson approximately $15 million a year, and I don't know about that. It's not meant to be a slight on Sims by any means. I think that he's could be a great guy off the bench. I think that he can definitely be an energy guy and be someone that can get a better feel for the game going forward. But first off... Mitch may be in his fourth season and feel like he's been around forever, but he's actually just a little bit more than six months older than Sims. Mitchell Robinson turns 24 on April 1st, and Jericho Sims turns 24 on October 20th, so they're like right there. We've seen them both affect shooters, but Mitchell Robinson affects shooters so much more. Sims averages about a half a block a game, and in Mitch's worst season, he averaged a block and a half. So I'm not ready to toss Mitch to the curb just yet. Jericho's defensive impact is going to be placated on, you guessed it, effort and athleticism. He's going to come in. He's going to hit that Bane button. Fuck this. I shall rise. And he is going to go all out. The problem with going all out is that it's going to leave him susceptible to making some mistakes. We've seen him fumble the ball away from time to time, grab a defensive rebound, and just kind of have it slapped out of his hand. And now offensively, neither of them are going to stretch the floor or be these big damage guys from the post. I have noticed that Sims has gotten a little bit more confident in his dribble handoff game. I think he's gotten a lot better in his outlet passing, and he's definitely grabbing those rebounds and looking and keeping his eyes up a lot better than he was before. But for the most part, his offensive contributions are going to come from rolling to the rim and being on the offensive glass and battling down there. And both of those things, Mitch is currently better at than him. And Mitch has got good chemistry with RJ and the pick and roll. And Jericho's great, but I'm just not ready to throw Mitchell Robinson to the curve for him just yet. I think that they'd work best as a tandem. It's not like our roster is overflowing with depth at center. Nerlens Noel is under contract for next year at least, and I'm not confident that he's going to be able to stay as healthy as he needs to be to be on the court to make a difference. So if Mitch walks, we're likely going to have to pay somebody to come in, or we're going to have to use another pick. Likely both. Keep Jericho and Mitch together, like a tandem, like a tag team, like Thunder and Lightning like Peanut Butter and Jelly, like Chris Jericho and The Big Show, who won the tag team titles in 2009. It worked then, and it could work again. Jericho just needs a little bit more time to iron out the kinks, and we should not be putting too much on his plate just yet. His mechanics are solid. Everything is nice and sound. Great, athletic great athleticism, great effort. Everything's there for him. Just a matter of putting those pieces together. For the next Wall, I'm Raymond Brentgert, and remember, when you move better, you feel better.